So we have talked about a lot of clans on this show, but the single thing that ties all of those clans together is that they're all from Konoha. So I figured today we should talk about a clan that isn't from Konoha. No, today we're gonna talk about the Kaze Kage clan. Do you have a guess where the Kaze Kage clan is from? I'll give you a second. The Hidden Sand. They're called the Kaze Kage clan because a lot of them have been Kaze Kages, but we don't know their true clan name. So we're going with Kaze Kage. And there's not as much information about the Kaze Kage clan as they're not from Konoha, but I'm gonna try my best to lay out detailed description of who they are, what they do, and what their abilities are for you. So for me and the hard work I'm about to put in, please like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. So here's the thing. We do know for a fact that Rasa, Gara, Tamari, and Konkuru are all members of the Kaze Kage family. But what we don't know is if Reto, Shamon, and the third Kaze Kage were part of the Kaze Kage clan. Reto and Shamon being the first and the second Kaze Kage is the third Kaze Kage, whose name we don't know. But because we don't know for sure whether or not they belonged to this clan, I'm just gonna assume that they did because it's more fun for me that way and you get more information that way. So I'm gonna go down the line of Kaze Kages, tell you what their abilities were, what they accomplished for the hidden sand, and how they passed their lineage along, which means there's no other place to start but Reto, the first Kaze Kage. It's stated in the third data book that Reto used his overwhelming power to gather all desert dwelling ninja under his leadership. We don't know what about his power was so awe-inspiring, but we do know one of his feats. Essentially, the only thing that the anime shows to us in terms of first Kages is that Kage Summit where Hashi Shirama pulls everyone together and tries to hand out the tailed beasts. But it was at this meeting that Reto revealed that he didn't need a tailed beast from Hashirama because he had already caught Shukaku. And because he had already caught Shukaku, he demanded part of Konoha's fertile land and 30% of the money that all other nations were going to pay to Hashirama for those tail beasts. This is because he didn't need a tail beast from Hashirama, so he wanted compensation other ways. All the other Kages flew into a rage, basically saying that that demand is way too high. And as they flung around threats of war, Hashirama begged them to cooperate. But at the core of this, that means that Reto was strong enough to capture a tailed beast. And what's even crazier than that, he probably didn't have magnet release. That's because magnet release was created by the second Kaze Kage. So this man with no magnet release was able to essentially bare knuckle box Shukaku into submission for the sand. But all that power didn't help him because he, like every Kaze Kage that came after him, was assassinated. His reluctance to join the five Kage summit and make a unified nation got him murdered. By who? We don't know. But this this is said to be the start of what would be the cursed Kaze Kage lineage. And just like that, the Kaze Kage ship fell into the hands of his protector, Shamon. Not Shaman, Shamon, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Shamon is arguably the most interesting character on this entire list. And yes, that is Gara included. So like I said, he was Reto's number one protector, much in the same way that Hiruzen protected Toby Rama, Toby Rama protected Hashirama, you get it. But once Reto bare knuckled boxed Shukaku into submission and slapped him into his first Jin Churiki, a monk by the name of Bun Puko, you cannot blame me for not remembering that. Shamon was curious about using the Jin Churiki and studying his techniques and newfound powers in ways that would help the Hidden Sand become more powerful. This was pretty easy considering the fact that they had just literally slapped Bunpuko and Shukaku into a tea kettle for the entirety of their lives. So they were pretty easy to keep an eye on. So Shimon decided to try and interpret some new jutsu from the duo. We don't necessarily know what jutsu he derived from Shukaku, because I misspoke earlier. It was actually the third Kazekake who created Magnet Release. But we do know that he wanted to use the geographical advantage of the desert to allow death desert shinobi to fight multiple targets at once. So while researching Shukaku and Bumpuko's relationship and how they use these new jutsu, he also formulated a new way for his ninja to attack. And this was to use replacement bodies to fight other ninja. What do I mean by replacement bodies? I mean puppets. Shimon identified that if his ninjas could control multiple fake bodies, they could fight multiple targets at once. And since his entire plan as the Kaze Kage was to increase the military strength of the Hidden Sand, this was a massive breakthrough. I just remembered why he was researching into Shukaku. He wanted to be able to control him because believe it or not, Shukaku wasn't too happy about being in a teapot. What's crazy is that at the end of the show, Shukaku reveals himself to be a really good guy. And so it was like, if you didn't lead with the whole 
people stuff them in a monk, stuff them in a teapot thing probably would have just helped you anyways. I mean, that's literally what Hagoromo sent them there to do. He was like, keep an eye over this deserty area. Lead with kindness, everyone. But unfortunately, Shamon did not lead with kindness, and that's why he was assassinated. By who? For what? We don't know. But because he was assassinated, it left open a spot at the Kazekage role, and guess who took it? His protector, the third Kazekage, whose name we don't know. Data book entries literally go first Kazekage, second Kazekage, fourth Kazekage. Why? Makes even less sense when you consider the fact that he is hailed as the strongest Kazekage ever. But how did he achieve this strength? Well, as the protector of Shamon, naturally, he had to be with Shamon a lot. So when Shamon was researching into how to control Shukaku, the third Kazekage was looking at his jutsu and his ability to control Saiyan. And conveniently, the third Kazekage just had magnetic chakra already. So he combined his magnetic chakra with iron powder and mixed that iron powder into sand to be able to control iron sand. Obviously, since his sand was mostly iron, it was much more powerful than just a regular sand user like Gara. It was even stronger than the gold sand technique that Rasa used later on because iron's harder than gold. Magnet release, for those of you who haven't seen my Kike Genkai video, is the combination of earth and wind chakra releases. And most people from the village in the sand are very proficient in wind release. But the third Kazekage forgot he was a Kazekage for a little bit there and lived his best life as the strongest Kazekage until Sasori kidnapped him, murdered him, and made him into a puppet. And the fact that Sasori put so much time and planning into the capture of the third Kazekage actually made him Sasori's favorite puppet. Sasori was also able to apply magnet release to this puppet to allow him to continue to manipulate Iron Sand. Goes to show how strong Sasori was. But here's the thing, the Hidden Sand didn't know what Sasori did. They thought the third Kazekage just up and vanished. So they looked for him for years, but the problem was that there was a war going on. The Third Great Ninja War, to be exact. We know that the Hidden Sand was involved in the Third Great Ninja War, we just don't know who they were fighting. So they had to assign a fourth Kaze Kage, and in comes Rasa. But after the Third Great Ninja War concluded, they would continue to look for the Third Kaze Kage. And it wasn't actually until the fifth Kaze Kage, Gara was ruling that they found out what happened to it, because they saw Sasori using him as a puppet. There's also a filler episode in Naruto, where Orochimaru is still trying to master all ninjutsu and therefore he wants a better understanding of the iron sand technique. So he finds a little bit of the third Kazekage's DNA and then uses Edo Tensai to bring him back to life. To this point that Orochimaru uses that Edo Tensai third Kazekage to fight Sasori's puppet of the third Kazekage. And while Orochimaru's version of iron sand is stronger, Sasori's puppet's technique make the third Kazekage remember that he was once alive and not always just a puppet for Orochimaru. And that makes him stop wanting to be controlled by Orochimaru. So he basically just breaks out of 10 sciences. See you later. There was a reason that he was considered the strongest Kazekage ever. Think about what iron manipulation gives you in the ninja world. It made him essentially invulnerable to all metallic weapons, kunai, blades, everything. And on top of that, considering where he came from, the land of the puppets, he could use his iron sand to clog up their joints, like Shino did to Konkura. Because of this, he had a hard counter to basically everything that was coming out of the hidden sand. So, of course, he sat at the top until he got murdered. And that's what led to our fourth installment of the Kaze. Kage family, Rasa. This is our first like truly well-known member of the Kazekage clan. And uh, not a great guy, but very powerful. Why do I say he was very powerful? Well, mostly because of the fact that he had to fight Chukaku one-on-one -on -one many times and got to reseal him every single time. Essentially, Shukaku, who Ross had slapped into his son, Gara, kept going on rampages whenever Gara fell asleep. So Rasa had to create specialized Fuinjutsu, aka sealing techniques, to put Shukaku back into Gara every time he raged out. This wasn't the only difficulty that Rasa had during his Kazekage ship. I mean, one, he was just thrust into the role without any real preparation. And two, during his Kazekage ship, the Wind Daimyo, the man who sees over the whole land of wind, started pulling funding for the hidden sand. Essentially, the Wind Daimyo identified that ninja services were actually cheaper to get from Konoha as opposed to the hidden stand. Yes, the hidden stand, everything's a JoJo reference. But this pushed Rasa into a corner, essentially because his ninjas weren't as strong as Konoha and they were also more expensive because of how hard it is to get out of a desert. The wind time, yo, stopped funding his village. This could lead to the extinction of the hidden sand. So Rasa, like Shamon, focused on increasing the quality of his ninja. And because of this, he ordered Granny Chio to seal Shukaku into his very own son, Gara. In order to make Gara the sand's ultimate weapon that would vault them back into relevancy of the ninja sphere. However, since Granny Chio sealed Shukaku into Gara while he was still in his mother, Karua, 
she died giving birth to him. And most people would be like, oh, Rasa didn't care. He just wanted the weapon. He was actually distraught about the death of his wife and he was trying everything he could to resuscitate her. And in the beginning of Gara's life, Ross actually taught him ninjutsu. But as he got older, he assigned Yashimaru, aka Karua's brother, to be his caretaker, which ostracized him from Timari and Konkuro, his siblings. But as even more time progressed, Rasa realized that Gara was not the weapon he intended him to be. He realized it was a failed experiment. Gara would fly off the handle and Chukaku would be summoned and kill many of the Hidden Sands members. So Rasa came up with a plan to see how well Gara could control Shukaku. Essentially, by having Yashimaru attempt to assassinate Gara and then having Gara see whether or not he would lash out and kill Yashimaru or hold back. And if he did lash out and kill Yashimaru, what would that do? Would Gara be able to keep his emotions in check and not have Shukaku fly out of him? Or would Shukaku fly out of him? And believe it or not, after Gara kills Yashimaru, out comes Shukaku. It's at this point that Rasa realizes that the experiment is not what I wanted it to be. He signs Gara away as useless and assigns six assassins to try to kill him, every single one unsuccessful. However, as Gara realized that he was cursed to live alone, he actually got better control of Shukaku. And because of this Rasa decided to give him one more chance and thus issued the end of the assassination attempts on Gara. And I know what you're saying. How is Rasa worried about the wealth of the village when he has a Kekigenkai that can collect gold? Well, actually, fun fact, that gets explored in Gara Hedon, Gara's light novel. Rasa teaches Shigizane, a character from Gara Hedon, how to use water release to collect gold dust from the sand. He then brings this gold dust back to Rasa. But Rasa just uses it all in combat or sealing Shukaku, so he never has time to compress it and make it into little tokens. But because gold is heavier than sand, he's able to feed gold into Shukaku's body in order to seal him, which is what made him so effective at keeping an eye on Gara. On top of magnet release, he's also able to use water release which he uses in a high velocity, high density blade that can cut Gara's absolute defense. He can also use Yin release, but none of this stopped him from getting murdered. This time by another Akatsuki member, Orochimaru. Orochimaru reached out to Rasa and said, we should invade Konoha because I don't like it and they're stealing all your business. Rasa says, sounds good to me. We'll slap Gara in the middle of the village. We'll have him release Shukaku and then he'll destroy it. And then I, I don't really know why Orochimaru felt the need to kill a dude who he was working with, but he did and then he put his face on his face and then boom he was the fourth Kazekage. But that wasn't the end of the fourth Kazekage story. Fourth Kazekage gets brought back in the fourth great shinobi war and he laments at the idea of fighting people from the hidden sand, a village he had tried to bolster the power of. But the third Raikage says to him well hopefully the future generations beyond us are more powerful than we are. But Rasa expresses doubt about this notion. It's at that point that he comes across Gara. Gara, who explains to him after stopping his gold sand attack with this sand that he is no longer the Jinchuriki of the one tail Shukaku. This confused Rasa, but made him all but certain that Gara wouldn't be able to defeat him and therefore had not surpassed him. But as the battle goes on, Gara actually catches Rasa and the two other Kage who are with him in a statue of Karua, his mother. Rasa is unable to break out of this statue and realizes that his mother was right there along with him this entire time. And that Gara's true strength never came from Shukaku, a Karua. As he's being sealed into this statue, Rasa explains to Gara with tears in his eyes that Karua always loved him and that he had forced Yashimaru to lie about his mother hating him in order to test Gara's control of Shukaku. He then with tears in his eyes tells Gara that he's sorry for all of his failings as a father and finally acknowledges that Gara had surpassed him and trusts the hidden sand in Gara's hands for the rest of his life. But since we're talking about Gara, let's talk about Gara. Now we're talking the Kazakage clan, so there's also Tamari and Konkuro. We'll go over those quickly. Ironically, Tamari and Konkuro and Gara represent everything that has been used to build up the hidden sand throughout the years. Most hidden sand members have an affinity for wind release because they're from the land of the wind. This is what Tamari represents. Her ability to use her three moon fan, which can literally level entire forests, represents the pure height of wind release. Add this on to her summon, which is a weasel with a scythe and an eye patch. It's adorable. It's one of my favorites. And its ability to send cutting blades of winds that can also level an entire forest. Tamari represents everything that the hidden sand was built on. And most likely the techniques that Reto used in order to capture Shukaku. So what does Konkuro represent? Well, Konkuro represents the findings of Shamon and his ability to make a person who can fight multiple enemies at once using puppets or replacement ninjas. His black maiden and other puppets show how far 
far puppeteering has come since its inception with Shamon. Conqueror uses these abilities in the exact way that Shamon had wanted. He uses it to lead the front lines of the Hidden Sands armies, making him arguably the best puppeteer in the history of Naruto. And then there's Gara. Gara, who uses the magnet release he inherited from Shukaku to control sand in any way he wants. But here's the thing, Gara stands for more than just magnet release because Gara doesn't actually use magnet release to control his sand. Gara's magnet release allows him to control the chakra density in his own sand, being able to make it thinner or thicker, depending on whether he's used it on offense or defense. Sand is not magnetic. Gold and iron are, but sand isn't. Gara can only control sand because Shukaku could control sand, and Shukaku granted him the blessing of being able to continue to control sand after he was pulled from him. So not only does Gara represent magnet release and how it got incorporated into the Hidden Sands ninjutsu techniques, he represents the furtherment of the relationship with Shukaku. Reto captured Shukaku, slapped him into Bunpuku, and threw them both into a tea kettle. Gara represents the friendship that evolved over the years through Jinchuriki. Something, by the way, that Shukaku was always open to, because Shukaku and Bunpuku were actually very close friends. And on top of that, he represented the strengthening of the hidden sand. He was born to be the ultimate weapon, but ironically, he was the ultimate unifier. Using the lessons he learned from Naruto, he became the youngest ever Kaze Kage and actually brought the hidden sand back to the forefront of relevancy. He did this with his own strength, not by disseminating it amongst his other shinobi. Gara's strength and his ability to control sand was so undeniably strong that in the war, it demanded respect. So much respect that he was chosen to be the leader of the allied shinobi forces. But it's not just Gara's ability to control sand that makes him powerful. Gara has some of the highest levels of chakra in the entirety of this show. He shows no slowing down after Shukaku's been pulled out of him in his ability to control sand continuously. He also has earth, wind, and lightning releases. But the Gara that you remember from OG Naruto is long gone. The Gara who had no other choices outside of using his sand. Gara realized that his taijutsu was actually not as good as he wanted it to be. This was mostly due to the Rock Lee fight. Because of this, he actually recruited Shira, the seven heavenly breaths guy, to train him in taijutsu. And that taijutsu became so good that Kenshiki Otsutsuki acknowledged that his taijutsu was as good as Naruto as Darui's. And when he's not fighting, he likes tending to cacti. I don't know what that has to do with this, but it's a fun little fact that we learned in Gara Hedon. Another little fun fact that we learned in Gara Hedon is that Gara actually was supposed to be married to a woman named Hakuto. This is because Tamari married Shikamaru and that the children that she would have would have a claim to the Kazikage ship. So the elders of the village tried to get him to marry a woman and have children. They tried to do the same thing with Konkuro, but he said that Gara should do it as the Kazikage. But in the end, he just ended up adopting Shinki. I'll cover Gara Hedon later. And Shinki is essentially everything that the third Kaze Kage was. He's also able to control iron dust and make iron sand. But we won't go too deep into him right now. I hope you guys like this Kaze Kage clan explained type video. The Kaze Kage clan is probably my favorite clan outside of Konoha, except maybe the Hozuki or the Hoshigaki. But those are hidden steam villages and we'll get there eventually. But until then, guys, please, if you like this video, like it subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell listen i'm not saying that rasa is one of the better fathers in naruto but at least he was there